been a lot of research in recent times about the effect of music on the brain in education. But the bottom line seems to be music makes kids smarter. But we already knew that. Technology is also an integral part of our lives now, and it also has a pretty major effect on education. And in fact, technology literacy is going to be one of the keys for developing nations in the 21st century. So what have we thought about combining the two, music and technology? The result could be a way of improving students' education in their lives and creating a very t creative tech literate population. Unfortunately, it's exactly what's missing in the developed schools in developing countries. We're going to take a look at a couple of countries. Cambodia, which is emerging after the Khmer Rouge genocide and 25 years of civil war, and Myanmar, whose people suffer under a very repressive military regime. First, let's take a look at the, the only two state-supported art schools in Cambodia, the Royal University of Fine Arts and the Secondary School of the Arts. The Secondary School is located on the outskirts of Phnom Penh. It's in a floodplain, and the facilities are really quite modest. Windows have shutters, but no glass. There are very limited resources. Even music books and, sc and scores are scarce. But the children are still spirited and optimistic. They just really need a chance and need our help. Here you're seeing a 12-year-old boy working with another older student. Music Center in Yangon, Myanmar is a privately funded music center. There are no state supported schools in Myanmar. Students there range from very poor to fairly well off who can actually, students who can actually pay their tuition. Um, the facilities are modest, but they're considerably better than the two Cambodian schools. They have air conditioning, a couple of, couple of computers. Uh, there's a couple of MacBook Pros for, this, for uh, the teachers. But you can see this is the choir room. This is the choir rehearsal. This is the um, recital st studio. Uh, they do have internet. Broadband is available, but it is very slow. Uh, video rarely works there. Um, and they have to contend with the government blocking many sites. Uh, power outages occur in the afternoon on most days, though the school does have a backup generator. Again, these, these kids have a, a real willingness to learn, and they're very appreciative of anything you can do for them.
find Skidamit on the web, um, as well as on YouTube and on Facebook. Cambodian Living Arts is uh, one of the private organizations in Cambodia, and it's doing quite well, and it's doing some very important work. Hi, my name is Arn Chon Han. I am the founder of Cambodian Living Arts. In 1975, when the Khmer Rouge took over Cambodia, I was 12 years old. I found the Cambodian Living Art in honoring of all the masters who were killed by Pol Pot. Also in honoring uh, the masters who are now still living, very few of them, in order for them to teach younger generations, for them to continue our old traditional music and dance. These old masters are very few who survived. 90% of all performers, artists were killed. At Cambodian Living Arts, they teach music, dance, and shadow puppetry to Cambodian youth. They have some good older technology at Cambodian Living Arts. They have a small recording studio with uh, Pro Tools. Much of the equipment at this studio is, uh, was donated by uh, Peter Gabriel, the uh, rock and roll rock musician. And in 2010, we held the first uh, music technology workshop at the Cambodian Youth Arts Festival. Apple and uh, Yang Suto Conservatory provided computers, and Apple shipped them to Cambodia. And then uh, we also brought up brought some keyboards and taught uh, workshops in GarageBand. The lab was open most of the most of the day, so that students could come by whenever they'd like and, and work with it. Um, and it was qu really quite successful. They were very excited at, at the Cambodian Living Arts. <laughs> Cambodian Living Arts can also be found on the web and uh, also on YouTube and Facebook. Pump Nal primary school in Siem Reap, Cambodia, is one of the real success stories. Siem Reap is the uh, home of Angkor Wat and Taprom, which is uh, the tomb uh, featured in Tomb Raider, uh, the uh, Lara Croft movies. And it's one of the real success stories in Cambodia. This school has a 30 com station computer lab. Um, its facilities are clearly much nicer than uh, the secondary school in Phnom Penh. Uh, for one, they have drainage here. Uh, the drainage system will take care of the rains during the monsoon series season. Uh, kids are very, very excited and very, f and very uh, appreciative. Uh, and they have this, there's the 30 station computer lab. Most of the computers are older. They're Pentium 2s and 3s. Um, and the kids are working mainly on Microsoft Office pro programs, older versions of this. This is Mr. Toon, and he teaches eight classes per day with 30 students in each five days a week. He also maintains all the computers and teaches classes for teachers during school breaks. He makes $300 a month. They also have a new library that was donated by Room to Read, another extremely good organization. And as you can see, the kids are kids. Tiny Toons is an amazing organization that works with orphans and street children in Phnom Penh.
music you hear is music that they produced. This is some of their homes. This is where you find these kids. could also be found on the web and they were recently featured at the first TEDx in Phnom Penh. So our goals are pretty simple. First, provide computers and internet to schools. Uh, it's essential that the students get to start to work with 21st century technology. Okay. We'll be using Linux as the operating system. It's free and open source. It it runs really much faster on older computers and it requires a little bit more technology knowledge which will also be benefit students in the long run. And then we want to train teachers. We need to train them in the 21st to, to teach 21st century learners. A country can't catch up if it's using dated technology and methodologies. Time classes can be one way of providing that education. We'll be looking at offering the courses on site and through distance learning. And finally, we need to establish collaborations and mentorships. There are too few quality teachers in Cambodia and Myanmar. In Cambodia, as many as 90% of the Western educated people were killed during the Khmer Rouge. Uh, this has left a real vacuum. Uh, salaries are very low, so it's hard to uh, entice teachers to come. Uh, but through collaborations with distance learning, uh, we have an opportunity to reach these children. Of course, there are cha more challenges, not the least of which are the governments of the countries themselves. Um, as we've mentioned, Myanmar's government is quite repressive. Uh, at times, it's difficult to even get a visa into the country. Customs can also be an, a, a problem. We had some difficulties in porting computers uh, when we wanted to do our workshop. Uh, but ultimately, um, these are things that can be worked out. The biggest problem, of course, still is a lack of resources. So you can help in many ways. Money is always needed, but showing you care and connecting with these students can go a long way. You can't believe how much they appreciate anything you do for them. If you'd like to donate, you can find us at, uh, on www.crowdrise.com, musictech-sea. Um, you can also go to the Center for World Music.org and donate there. And then finally, you can, for more information, go to my website. We really can make a difference. <laughs>